Hey guys, my name is Ozzy, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the new first episode of Black Lightning, the TV series on CW Network. The first episode is called The Resurrection, and basically this episode was perfect. Like, I don't have a Black Lightning t-shirt, but I wore my defla I wore my Flash shirt because they both came out the same day. The Flash episode was great too, but I'm not going to do a review on it because... I'm all right. It's already four seasons too deep. I'm, I can't go ahead and break that down. But anyway, I'm going to break down Black Lightning because to me, this show means so much. Because first of all, first black DC live action uh, superhero TV show. I, I just said like a whole bunch of words. I, I don't know why I did that. But basically, Marvel has Black Panther. DC has Static Shock. But Static Shock, because of the creator and the ownership issues, they, they probably won't be able to make it for a long time. But the Static Shock TV series is great. But uh, Black Lightning, the next best, the next best name. He's also like Static Shock's mentor too, so that's also great. But anywho, basically this first episode was great. The way it starts off is that you see like the main character, uh, Black Lightning, his alter ego, which is Jefferson Pierce. Like he's at like this fundraiser. He's the principal, and like you would think, and apparently for like the past nine years he hasn't been Black Lightning, and we soon find out that's because. His, he almost died because of one of his biggest villains, Tobias Will, which will be the main villain for the series. Like, pretty much brutally beat him almost near to death to the point where, like, he's in a bathtub, bleeding, and he's literally in a bathtub of his own blood, which is pretty gruesome. And this caused his, his, his then wife to leave him, becoming his ex-wife, and then now they have joint custody of the children. Like, clearly they both love each other, but she couldn't stand to see him keep getting hurt every time he comes home from like fighting so because of that the streets of freeland are which is clearly named because they're black they're in a free land anywho all that corny stuff aside the show is really great because first of all it's directed by a black couple and my a black couple because usually stuff like this and i'm sort of getting into the wrong hands like a, a person that isn't of color will be directing it and then the direction will be off and it doesn't touch base with the people it's supposed to be directed towards. Like, can you imagine 12 Years of Slave was made by, was uh, created and directed by a white guy. And it's like, dang, that's crazy. We can have a black person tell the story of slavery. I think that would make more sense. The movie was still good, but it's just that we have that more of, like, relatability when you have a black person direct something that's important. And, excuse me, I'm talking a lot. But uh, the other thing I like about the show, they, they touched upon police brutality without making it like such a thing where like oh yeah you have to be you have to uh, be black lives matter black lives matter this black lives they didn't do all that it basically just made it to a point where like it fit into the plot too so basically uh jefferson is driving home with with his daughter with his two daughters and one of them he just picked him up from being arrested because she was at a, a protest that was supposed to be anti-violent but ended up getting violent in the process and then like the 100 gang joined in and some other stuff like that and then basically he gets pulled over because he fits the description of a criminal that they're looking for. And his daughter, the youngest one, uh, I know Nissa is the older one. Jennifer, the youngest one, is recording. He's telling her not to record because he's fearing for his life. He doesn't want his daughters to get hurt either by the police. So he's telling them to stop recording. So she, she reluctantly puts down the phone. And then they realize that they have the wrong guy. And then they tell him to get back in the car. He asks them why. And at that moment, like you could tell, like, it really shows that uh, Jefferson is a good character because he was so angry to the point where like his eyes were glowing which showed that he could have just like went off on all of the people off on all of the cops that were like that just pinned him down against his car like they literally just pulled him aside for no reason and it's also like this is also done to just to build up to the point how much the city still needs black lightning and so basically the show goes on and while they're supposed to be at the fundraiser Jennifer try, goes to sneak out to a party. Her sister, uh, what's her sister name again? Her sister, uh, Janissa? Yeah. Her sister Janissa covers for her and says that you gotta be home by 10, 15 the latest. And so Jennifer goes to the party and she's just being rebellious because, you know, she's the she's the youngest daughter of the principal, so so much weight. Everybody expects her to be this, be and that, which is pretty good. And the character, the actress that she played by, China Ann McLean, She's done a lot of great work like on Disney, so like her acting, solid. The best thing uh, I forgot to mention, like all the cast in this show, they fit so perfectly together. Like it almost feels like they're a real family, even though they're not, which is really good. It's just a testament to their acting abilities. 
So basically, uh, Jennifer is at this party. She starts talking to somebody that's from the 100 gang. And she doesn't realize that he's in the gang until later when, oh yeah, but before any of that, like they're having conversation, like he's flirted with her and she said, she thinks later, she, she says that oh, I'm not just some hoe you can just ask and now you're going to take me and have sex in the back of the club. So I'm like, okay, bet. She's not sleazy at least. She's rebellious, but she's not sleazy. So that's tough. So basically they're having a conversation and then uh, one of the 100 gangs that we find out later, this guy, his name is Latavius, but his, his street name is Lala and he really hates when people call him Latavius. So it's la la or get beat up. But basically, the guy that was talking to Jennifer, one of the 100 gang members, he owes la la a lot of money. And basically, uh, la la's solution is to make is to make uh, Jennifer want a prostitute at the motel in town. And Jennifer's like, no, I just met this guy. I don't know him. He's not my boyfriend. And she, she basically punches him in the stomach and says, I'm leaving. And as she tries to leave, they grab her, right? And then the reason, the only reason why she got saved because her father found out that she snuck out to the party because Janissa ended up telling her that, uh, right? Did I, did I get that right? I, I feel like I keep messing up her name. Uh, yeah, I keep saying Janissa, Anissa. I apologize throughout the video. I, I can't even redo this. I'm already too deep into the video. But Anissa basically tells her father, Jefferson, that, that she's at the party. And then he fears for his safety, and he also finds out that like there's some like, hundred gang members at the party, so he goes in, and basically he, he cuts off all the power in the building because the bouncer wasn't trying to let him in. He knocks out the bouncer with like punch with the lightning punches, you know what I'm saying? Does the little sticky stuff, and then he gets he basically just causes a huge diversion, that, which allows her to get away. He scolds Jennifer later for for being reckless and going to places where she doesn't need to be. And then basically, this all leads up to the next day. The guy that saw her at the club, he he comes back again to bother uh, Jennifer. And he's basically trying to like kidnap her and like make her pay for like embarrassing her in front of his boss and all that. He's trying to get his little vengeance. And the thing I like about this is that Anissa does not go like that. She shows, she tells him to get out before she calls the police. And he thinks that he said, "Oh, I can do whatever I want." And then she grabs him and flips him over and slams him to the ground. I was like, "What?" Okay, and this is, she clearly knows the karate, you know what I'm saying? Following her and her father's sister, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was tough. And then later, then he gets embarrassed and he's like, I'm, he starts to pull out a gun and then Jefferson runs off because he's, he's watching the commotion from a distance. Then he runs up, he said, you don't got to do that. He basically dissuades him from pulling out the gun in front of all these people. He said, if you do this, you're basically just throwing away your whole life. And so he, he tucks the gun, he said, he's like, oh, you guys aren't going to get away with this. And he runs off. And then basically... Uh, Lala finds out about this and then he, he gets angrier at uh, the guy for, I don't know why, I can't remember his name, but like the guy that that tried to like, uh, he tried to turn, basically make Jennifer into a prostitute at the motel and do with the afro. And then that doesn't turn out so well. And then Jefferson goes out to see, uh, to see Lala and then basically this whole scene with like Lala and one of his younger employees, like you think it's his nephew at first, which it is, and then you find out that basically he's making his nephew run the block. His nephew is selling drugs in a white neighborhood, but he, he gets his nephew gets in trouble because of the fact that he's been paying too much attention to the games on his phone instead of selling drugs in the neighborhood. Like at first it seems like he just wants his, his nephew to be like pay attention and do good in school. Then it flips when he says, you need to be in on the blocks where the white kids are at and sell. I'm like, whoa, what? He's selling drugs at that age? And homeboy is like 12 years old at the oldest. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So basically, he grabs, uh, like Jefferson grabs Lala as he's about to like smack his nephew. But then, then Lala gets angry and says, oh, you're not about to tell me how to raise my nephew. And he pulls a gun on him. He said, I'll tell my boys to lay off your daughters, but you going to owe me one for this. And then ironically... Uh, what's his name? The guy with the afro, he goes after the daughters again, Jennifer and Anissa, and then he tries to, he basically kidnaps them and brings them to the motel, and then Lala is pissed. He smacks him out. He said, do you know what you've done? He basically just made a deal to, to like, protect them, and then he goes out and then kidnaps them like an idiot. <sighs> sadly, sadly. But Black Lightning finds out about this, and he has a mentor. Uh, what's his name? Okay, this guy named Peter Gamby, which is uh, Jefferson's Jefferson's uh, father figure slash mentor since Jefferson's father was killed by Tobias Wilkins for, 
for investigating into his like criminal activities and that's why he, that's what this whole thing was about and in the beginning of the episode he was basically saying how he was the real loser because even though he was trying he was fighting for vengeance he was the one that ended up losing everything which is one of the reasons why Jefferson stopped being Black Lightning because he was losing way too much in his personal life and it seemed like being a vigilante wasn't worth it and basically like they show like all this like footage of like if a vigilante is black and if a, if a hero is black, they call him a vigilante, but all the white superheroes like the Flash, Arrow, they're not called, I mean, well, Arrow's definitely called a vigilante. That made murders of people in the beginning. That, but I'm talking about all the other superheroes like Supergirl, Superman, and the Flash, they're called heroes, even though they basically fight in mass and keep themselves concealed, but they don't show the true identity, but they're called heroes, while Black Lightning was called a criminal. But the one guy who owned the store, he basically saw he has a recording of Black Lightning saving his life on his birthday. And he said, if it wasn't for Black Lightning, I would have died. The police weren't there to protect me. Black Lightning was. And it basically just reminds Black, it reminds Jefferson, aka Black Lightning, that he can still do good in his city. And then also, he realizes the police come to him telling him that his daughters have been kidnapped by a 100 gang member. So basically, they go out. Jefferson goes out. He talks to Peter. And Peter's like, I'm glad you decided to come back. They go to the basement. He locks up the shop. Puts the little blinds on to show him the new suit and the new suit. Oh, that thing lit like literally, like the blue and gold emblem it has like a a gold flash symbol in here, and then it has like the blue like outline. It's cool. It's kind of like a I want to say like an Iron Man S suit, but not Iron Man. More like the Batman armored version suit. And but it's not like it's not like it's not robotic. It's just like slightly like armored. It's not mechanical. So it's not like an Iron Man suit, but it, it's armored. And basically the suit is bulletproof. He goes up to the uh, 100 Gang Motel where like they're having a little prostitution going on. And they're basically trying to turn his daughters into prostitutes. He goes out and he basically just like literally beats everybody up, find people. He finds the guy that kidnapped his daughters. He said where he tried, he's trying to find Lala. And Lala basically told the guy with the afro to handle it while he's running away. And so Lala gets away, but Jeff, not before Jefferson can beat up like everybody in the 100 gang in the vicinity at the motel. He, he finds out one of the dudes that just got just got in with one of the prostitutes. That thing was funny. He was like, Shh, and the dude just falls back and then the prostitute is running outside the motel. It's, it's funny. I know it shouldn't have been. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was meant to be halfway funny, but not really. But that's besides the point. So Jefferson goes in. He The dude that kidnapped his daughters, he basically like, fries his chest and then he drops him on top of his car which is he, he deserved it he really did deserve it which was great and I was like that's perfect and so basically near the end of the episode like he gets closer with his wife because like he real she realizes how much the city needs him and even though she doesn't want to admit it he's like they basically just like solidly agree that the city needs black lightning and then we see Tobias Will for the first time in the episode at the end he has his goons kidnapped, or well, not even kidnapped, they just grab uh, Lala out of his car. And Tobias Will, he says, you know, Black Lightning has been hiding for all these years. You bring him out, you're messing up my business. He shoots so hard, put him right into his shoulder, and then he, he winds it up and brings him closer. He says, will I have to kill you, or are you going to take care of the problem? And that's when we realized that Tobias Will is like one of the biggest threats in the series. But he was in the beginning of the episode too. But like he's having a business meeting, and he's feeding one of his his henchmen that, that disobeyed him or they did something wrong to the piranha. So basically, Whale, to have like all these fish related like puns and jokes about his like uh his savagery as a villain. So he's one of like those crime bosses like uh Fisk and uh who else? Like pretty much just a crime boss. And or like uh what's the guy? Cottonmouth from uh, Luke Cage. But yeah. But overall, the episode was great. The music was good. The actors, the cast, they did a great job. I enjoyed the episode again. I really want to rewatch it again. It was great. Just to cast anything that I might have missed. And yeah, that's basically my review of the first episode of Resurrection. Black Lightning is here. And I really hope that the next 12 episodes of the season are great. I'm looking forward to more and more seasons. Hopefully, hopefully, even though Dwayne McDuffie, the creator of Static Shock, passed away like years ago. Hopefully there could be a live action Static Shock series. I can, I really, the culture needs this. We need a young black superhero. We, we need our own, we need our own Spider-Man. Someone that's young that the people can relate to. He has dreadlocks, 
He's already like fighting against the stereotypes. He's a hero. We need static shock. The people need it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the first episode of Black Lives Anywho, my camera died, but what I was trying to say is if you guys want to see me do more review, review more episodes of Black Lightning as it comes out throughout the season, just let me know, comment below, give this video like 20 likes and I'll continue to make this a regular weekly thing. I know this is kind of late, you guys are going to see this on, on Thursday, the episode came out on Tuesday. Uh, I was trying to do this, but I can really only record early in the morning until school starts up again. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Go ahead and give a big thumbs up. 20 likes, more reviews. And I'm out. Peace. I'm riding solo all by myself, all in the cool. Girl, it could be me and you. I brought that bag out South Beach to flex on your whole off you, girl. I just know you was a lesson. Me and you still was a blessing. Did me wrong and I still feel it in my chest. Damn.